Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Pastor Dan, our Care and Bridging Pastor, who just brought part two of the series next, a look at Peter. And so when you look at Peter, we're gonna talk a little bit more today about the denial of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, you look at Peter as someone who was with Jesus all the time, right. one of his closest confidants, and um, how quickly he seemed to fall away under fire sure. um, and denying Christ. Um, but I think to myself, um, I don't, I've never denied Christ in that way. I've never stood in front of people and said, you know, I don't believe him or I don't know him, but I know that there's other ways that we can deny Christ too. What can that look like? Very much so. You know, it, it's always contextual. Uh, the, the denial that Peter experienced can never be duplicated because that experience is never going to happen again. That was unique to him. Mm -hmm. But we all have our own unique circumstances in which we deny Christ. Like you say, probably none of our listeners have ever stood up and said, I don't know Jesus or I have nothing to do with Jesus. Uh, that's just not something that happens in our culture. Uh, but we do deny Christ any time that we choose to live a life that is outside of the kind of life He calls us to. Um, what, what people fail to comprehend is that a rejection of what Christ taught us is not just a rejection of His teachings, it's a rejection of the man because mm -hmm. He was more than a teacher. He lived everything that He taught. He was the essence of everything that He taught. And so anytime that we sin, uh, whether it be uh, an overt sin against someone else, or if it be a, a sin of omission, failing to do something, it, it all adds up to a denial of Christ. Hmm. And so I love how, as you move to the passage of John, you see this redemption and restoration of mm -hmm. him and their relationship and just the grace that characterizes our Savior. And from that um, place, we begin to serve others and literally feed people and the sheep. Yeah. And I think about um, a lot of the trips and places that we go, there's people who face very real denial of Christ Indeed. in situations all the time. Um, tell us some more about just some of the opportunities that we have to serve in those places in that way and just even here locally. Sure. I, I don't think uh, many faith bridgers know the expanse of serving opportunities that we have in our bridging ministry. On the international scene, we have uh, trips to every continent. We have well drilling trips for people who like to get dirty and muddy. I think you've even I been did. on I one did. of, been on of well those. Trip. Yeah. Uh, we have trips uh, to Central America, which primarily focus on ministry to children. And so mm -hmm. if you love kids and you love uh, ministering to them and meeting their needs, there's the, that opportunity. Uh, in Africa, we have an opportunity to help a community begin to become self-sufficient mm -hmm. by helping them build uh, chicken hatcheries and fish hatcheries and enabling these people to not only have jobs but food, which mm -hmm. they, they desperately need. In India, we have a multi-pronged ministry. Uh, a lot of it is humanitarian, but some of it is working with kids. Some of it is working with Christian leaders. Of course, I mentioned France, mm -hmm. uh, and you were just yes. with me <laughs> a month or so ago over there. So no lack of opportunities internationally, no lack locally. Uh, I've, I'm thinking right now primarily of our nonprofit Bridging for Tomorrow, mm -hmm. which works in the southern part of the Klein ISD, Title I schools. Health fairs, which we saw in the video, mentoring opportunities, one-on-one -on -one ministry to students, uh, campus beautification, uh, opportunities uh, for summer camp. We actually put on a sports camp over the summer. Uh, lots of things to do through that, through that nonprofit. But then we also have local partners that work with the homeless, uh, women's shelters, uh, human trafficking, on and on. It's as simple as asking, what are we doing? And we can find something for you to do. So the best way is to come by the Bridging Center on a Sunday? 
or, or go online or or give a call, call the church yeah okay call ask for me ask for Peggy uh, we will be happy to give you information and um, would love to see grow groups take mm -hmm. the initiative as groups yeah, it, to it, serve it's a great places. way to to strengthen your group and grow it is we often say the quote from Matt Carter that if you're aiming for mission you always get community because every trip we've ever been on you come home with this great community sure. of the people that you were there and so it's a yeah. great opportunity for our grow groups to serve as well to build community and make a difference so thanks today for the great reminders and some really practical steps that we can take as part of next Good. and thank you for joining us here today we'll see you back here next week thanks for joining us for postscript help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services learn more at faithbridge.org postscript